Alright, we're still talking about differentiability and continuity, and we'll go through a few more examples here. These are rather open-ended here, these first few. Write an equation for a function that is differenti differentiable and continuous at 2, 6, and sketch the graph. So, there's uh, an infinite number of possible answers for this one. But at the point 2, 6, this graph has to be continuous and smooth in order for it to be differentiable at that point. So any function going through that point, and I'll just do this one. We're told to write the equation for it, y equals x squared plus 2. But you don't have to come up with something even that difficult. You could just do in, like this. The line y equals 6 would be fine also. But any function that goes through that point in an ordinary fashion, just a smooth continuous function through that point, satisfies uh, the condition that we're given there. Number 19, write the equation for a function that has a limit as x approaches negative 3 but fails to be continuous there because it is undefined at x equals negative 3. So if it has a limit but isn't defined at that point, that would imply that it would have a hole in the graph at that point. So we need to come up with a function that has a hole at x equals 3. So we could do that by saying our function is going to have, uh, it's going to be undefined at x equals negative 3. So let's put x plus 3 in the denominator. That will make the function undefined at x equals negative 3 because putting in negative 3 for x would give me a zero denominator. But a zero denominator here would give us a vertical asymptote if the numerator weren't also zero at that point. To have a hole in the graph, we need the graph to have a numerator and denominator zero at that point. Then you gotta have any other factor up here. I'll just put in x plus two. Now algebraically, we can cancel the x plus threes and we're left with the graph x plus two. So this algebraically is equivalent. It simplifies to x plus two. So our graph of f of x looks just like this. It looks just like the graph x plus 2, like this, except, let me extend it down here, this function, so unlike this, this function as defined doesn't have a value when x is equal to negative 3. So if we come over here to negative 3, we need to put a little hole in the graph at that point. So that's it. That's and, and this is just one possible answer. There are, are an infinite number of other possible answers we could have. But this is one where the function has a limit as x approaches negative 3. As we come at negative 3 from one side or the other, we're getting closer and closer to this particular y value. But the function is undefined at that point because there's a hole in the graph. Number 20. Write the equation for a function that has a value for f of 4, so in other words, a value when x equals 4, but has no limit at x equals 4. Hmm. It has a value, but no limit. So if, if it has no limit, then that means it could have left and right limits that aren't the same. We can, we can satisfy these conditions by, by coming up with a piecewise function. So let's do this. Let's write f of x equals, and we'll have the definition change at x equals 4. So we'll have one thing when x is less than 4, and another thing when x is greater than 4, and we should make one of these a greater than or equal to. Either this or this should have an equality in there as well as the inequality, and that will cause it to be defined. It will have a value at x equals 4. And these could be anything. I'm just going to say x plus 2 and x minus 2. So it's x plus 2 when x is less than 4. And we aren't told to graph it, but this is easy, so let's do that. So x plus 2 is going to look something like this, but we're only going to graph that when x is less than 4. So looks like that, and then x minus 2, which looks like this, and we graph that when x is greater than or equal to 4. So that's what our function looks like, and you can see it has a value at x equals negative, 
oh, x equals positive 4. Sorry about that. I need to fix that graph. X, e x plus 2 would look like this. But when x is less than 4, so over here, that's what our function looks like. And then x minus 2, which looks like this, but we only graph that when x is greater than 4. So this is what our function looks like. Here's x equals 4. And so it has a value. It's defined right there at x equals 4. It has a certain y value. But it has no limit because the left coming from the left and the right, we approach different y values. And again, this is only one possible answer to this question. And number 21, we're given a piecewise function here, f of x, and we're told to find values for the constants a and b that will make this function both continuous and differentiable at x equals 4. And you can see x equals 4 is the x value at, with, at which the definition of the function changes. We have one definition for the function when x is less than 4 and another one when x is greater than or equal to 4. So for this to be continuous, the x values have to be the same. So just looking at the graph, um, whatever the function looks like to the left of x equals 4, it has to meet up with the function on the right side. They have to have the same value in, at, at 4 in order to be continuous. So let me just take note. For it to be continuous, then x squared must equal ax plus b when x equals 4. And so this actually is pretty easy. I'm just going to say x squared equals ax plus b and then put in 4 for x. So 4 squared is 16. That's going to equal a times 4 plus b. Now we can't solve this because there's two variables, but we do know something else. We know it also has to be differentiable at x equals 4. Now for it to be differentiable, it has to be smooth at x equals 4. So get a, get a mental picture here. At x equals 4, we've got two, two functions, one coming from the left side and one coming from the right side. So imagine, imagine two functions here. If, if they meet up in a way that is not smooth, then there's going to be a cusp there. So if they're coming, even if, even if one is just a little bit steeper than the other at that point, we would consider that a cusp. So they have to be coming at that point, at least at that point, they have to have the same slope right there, the same steepness on each side. So that means the derivative of each one has to be the same at x equals 4. So how do I write that? Well, I'll say the derivative of this first one, the derivative of x squared, must equal the derivative of this second one, the derivative of ax plus b, when x equals 4. Okay, now how do we deal with the derivative? Well, these are both pretty easy to differentiate. The derivative of x squared is 2x, and that must equal the derivative of ax plus b, which is simply a. And that has to be true when x equals 4. So I just put in 4 right there. 2 times 4 equals a. So we know that a is 8. And now we can plug that back into this equation. And when we do that, I'm going to have 16 equals 8 times 4 plus b. 8 times 4 is 32. So 16 is 32 plus b. So b has to be negative 16. I'll write that down here with my other one, and that's my answer.